Greetings and welcome to an LGR thing where we are once again going conventioning, which is uh, something that is not quite as conventional as a thrifts episode necessarily, but it is somewhat of a similar format that I've done before, where we're just going to be going to an event or a show or whatever you want to call it and see what it's like touring the place, looking at the stuff that's available, and just conveying the overall experience as best I can through video form. So my brother and I went up there to record this, and it was uh, taking place at Elmhurst, Illinois, as the Vintage Computer Festival Midwest is the event. Have I said that yet? I have now. That's what it is, VCFNW. I've been there once before. 2019 and it was awesome but I just went as a person <laughs> visiting and uh, I didn't have a table or anything. Well now I do. I got an exhibit of LGR things. This is the first time doing something like that so that'll be an experience. And yeah let's just dive right into the Vintage Computer Festival Midwest experience in 2021. Okay, so before we get to the actual show floor itself, what exactly is Vintage Computer Festival Midwest 16? Well, as you can see by this delightfully mid-90s GeoCities-esque looking website, uh, it is a show that happens in Elmhurst, Illinois, and it's been going on for 16 iterations of it. Yeah, 16 is the number of shows, not the year. A little confusing. I mean, if you look through the timeline, it gets even more confusing because 2020 was the 15th show, but it was virtual only, not physical, so I don't know why that counts. But anyway, it's been going on for a while, and uh, I just started attending in 2019 as a random visitor, just showing up, seeing what it was like, and it was awesome. So I decided to come back this time as a featured, I don't know, person, guest, whatever, hanging out with my own table in an LGR Things exhibit. First time I've ever done that, so it's pretty exciting, but there are a ton of different cool people and awesome devices and bits of computer hardware that get set up at the show and shown off, traded, sold, whatever, which I don't think exactly works the same way at some of the other VCFs around the country. I haven't been to those yet, but uh, VCF Midwest is one that you can do all of that, and it's, I think, become one of the largest, if not the largest, of these VCFs at this point, in terms of overall visitors, which I think is a little over a thousand or so this year, uh, despite the fact that, yeah, it was a masks required show by order of the DuPage County Health and the host venue, so everyone had to have their masks on all the time inside, which was fine. I thought it worked out very well. And yeah, it happens on a Saturday and Sunday, but my brother Luke and I, who was taken along with me to do pretty much all of this footage that you're seeing and just record all that and help setting things up, we left on a Thursday to drive up there from my area of North Carolina, which took about 11 hours-ish to make it all the way up to the Chicagoland area and then west of that over into Elmhurst. And we ended up staying at the Clarion Inn, which is right there, connected to the Waterford Conference Center, where the show takes place. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is one of those classic conference centers that just hasn't been updated in decades. It's hideous, and I mean that in the best possible way. Like, I think this is actually kind of a perfect venue for a vintage computer festival. And yeah, it all takes place just in this area and the hallways surrounding it. It's just gonna be all cleared out and filled up with exhibitors here soon. And yeah, that's all we were doing on this first pre-day of the show, just getting familiar with the venue itself, saying hi to folks, and then just setting up all of the tables including mine here on this eight foot by four foot table, which I promptly covered with a wood grain paneling tablecloth because those do exist apparently. And I was set up with some other content creator types, a computer clan right there, an 8-bit guy with TechSelec, and yeah, they just shoved all of us weird YouTuber-y people over in a corner, and it's like, you know what, stay there. And yeah, after getting things generally laid out on the tables, it was all about testing stuff out and seeing what broke along the journey getting here, because this old stuff, Without fail, something goes wrong. And yeah, thankfully for me, it was only like three or four little things, you know, loose cards and connections and some driver issues and something else didn't work with the sound, but I got it all sorted eventually into the evening. And it was kind of comforting that literally everyone else here is in the same boat, just everybody setting up their tables, many of them much larger than mine, and then trying to get everything functioning as much as possible before the doors actually open to the general public in the morning. There's so many things that can go wrong with stuff this age, and that's just how it goes. I was quite pleased with my little LGR table over in the corner here. I don't know, I've just never done anything like this. So it was wild seeing this stuff that I normally just show in videos out in the open for anybody to come up and check out and get their hands on and talk about or whatever, man. And 
Of course, there's always an item or two that you could use that you forgot about. And thankfully, this place has a micro center nearby, which I don't get to go to very often. I just don't have anything close by to where I live that's like this. And yeah, they carry all kinds of old cables and adapters and cards and extension thingies and stuff for computers going back to the 80s and 90s. Like seriously, they have just a little bit of everything. So I picked up a couple of cables and adapters and I went over into this section here and I was like, oh man, I actually still have like parallel port cards and compact flash adapters and all kinds of little useful things. And I actually ended up picking up this five and a quarter inch drive bay storage box because <laughs> why not? Another goofy yet useful drive bay add-on. Yeah, I can always take one of those. After this, a whole bunch of people ended up going to Aurelio's Pizza for an evening exhibitor supper of sorts. I didn't get any footage or photos there or whatever, but it was really good. Got a little sleep overnight, and then first thing next morning, got some breakfast, and the show was kicking off. 9 a.m., the first thing you do when you get here is just walk inside the entrance and grab yourself a badge. And yeah, this is a free event, so you don't have to pay for anything if you don't want to, but yeah, they just request that you get a badge so we know you're a person with a name, I guess. And uh, yeah, that's that. And immediately the energy is starting to rise. The buzz is buzzing. <laughs> and even over at the table, there are already like one or two people ready to go and start asking questions about LGR things. But yeah, just got everything all powered back on and running again. Hopefully it's still working since last night. I don't know. Hopefully nobody touched it overnight. Who knows? I don't know. Usually people are nice about that, but I don't know. Never done anything like this, so I didn't know what to expect. Everything was great though and still working. So yeah, got started manning the LGR things table. And uh, yeah, this right here, this is where I was for the next two days, pretty much. I just about never left here unless it was for something else I was committed to doing. But my brother was there doing all kinds of recording of footage. So before we take a tour of the floor, let's enjoy a little bit of ambience from Vintage Computer Festival Midwest 16. VCF Midwest Radio is back on the air. Welcome, we are officially open for two days of fun. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> my people. I have missed this. Ugh. I don't know about you, but these kind of events really just make me feel alive and connected <laughs> to the kind of work that I do. It's so easy to just get caught up in the routine of troubleshooting and recording and editing and writing and scripting and emails and everything else that comes along with being a whatever I am, I don't know, retro YouTuber person thing. And getting to these kind of shows, seeing the actual people that watch this stuff and getting to meet everyone and see all of their cool things and just engage in that energy and the hubbub and the excitement and seeing things I've never seen before or only in photos or coming across something that I haven't seen in 25, 30 years or whatever. It's fantastic. 
And this is just the outer hallway. We haven't even gotten inside the main area of the convention center to look at all those tables. So yeah, I'm just gonna let some of this footage play, comment along the way, I guess, and let's just enjoy the ride. Honestly, I'm seeing a lot of this for the first time right along you here, because uh, I was back there at that table, which I was very happy to do, but you know, I was back there the entire time, basically just meeting a bunch of y'all and selling merch, signing things, taking hundreds of selfies, and just generally chatting about whatever, man, hanging out. That's exactly why I come to this show, and I was more than happy to do that. But you know, I just kind of still also wish that I was able to more freely explore. I got a little bit of time to explore while I was there, but you know, it's one of those things where it's hard to do that. Yeah, oh man, there's so much cool stuff here at the show. There always is, but this year in particular, I was really thrilled to see kind of a wider variety of objects that I had not seen at the previous one. For instance, this entire table, or really a whole corner of a few tables dedicated to UK computers. You know, all kinds of stuff from Sinclair, Acorn, Amstrad, and so on. A few of these I'd never seen. I'd never seen an Archimedes before in person. I really want to get one in cover someday. Uh, and then like all these monitors, like all these 50 Hertz PAL monitors, it was neat. Along with a fantastic display just dedicated to Sinclair research and Sir Clive Sinclair's array of legendary machines. Rest in peace, sir. He passed away shortly after this show, which I found rather poignant. And yeah, it just goes from table to table of things that you'll recognize, but have been equipped in some way with fantastically cool additions. I mean, the whole world of homebrew add-ons and uh, user-made products and boards and expansions and new chassis and like 3D printed things. There was so much of that there. It was genuinely hard to even pick out certain things from the crowd because every table was jam packed full of some interesting product I have been interested in or I've never heard of most likely, because a lot of this stuff is for platforms that I just don't have a ton of intimate familiarity with. You know, I mostly stick to IBM PCs and compatibles, and I'm always thrilled to go to a show like this and, you know, you see the occasional PC, but really my table, <laughs> at least in the main convention area, was one of the few that was dedicated to PC stuff. Everything else was some other architecture, some other operating system, a lot of things that were way older than I've ever used before to any real degree, or things that I have used in some other form, but I've never actually seen it in this form. Like this delightful little Altair 8800 clone. I have a full-sized clone of one of these, but this one was really sharp looking, nice and small and compact. Just didn't know that this was a thing, and now I'm really interested. And then just all of the vendor tables with like say big box PC games for days, it seemed like. <laughs> I did stop at a few of these. I meant to pick a few things up, but by the time I had the time to go back and you know get over there, most of it was gone, but that's no surprise. A lot of the things that are here, the best stuff ends up selling within like the first two to three hours. Like by lunchtime that first day, a good quarter of the inventory of all the best stuff is long gone. And that's just how it is, but there's so much still hanging around that you're gonna find cool stuff all the way up until the end of the day on Sunday. And the vast majority of this, I'm always happy to see, is very fairly priced. I mean, a lot of the supposed value of all these things has shot up, especially over the past couple of years in particular, but most folks at the show, they're not here to like make an absolute killing. I mean, I'm sure some of them do, but even the things that you know would sell for a good chunk more if they were plopped onto eBay for a buy it now price, yeah, they're usually not priced that high here. Plus, you don't have to pay for shipping. You don't have to worry about packaging and things getting destroyed. It is especially a fantastic spot to go to for brittle old plastic machines. A lot of the Apples and Commodores and things that tend to break a lot during shipment if they're not well packaged, as well as CRTs. Tons and tons of CRTs of all kinds. Like I saw nice VGA CRT monitors for sale all day on each day for like 10 bucks a piece. PVMs and BVMs for like 200 something to $300 or even less, depending on what kind of model it is. I mean, obviously there were some really, really high dollar things too. And there is an auction that happens at one point. Yeah, that's one way that they recoup some of the cost of putting on the show since it's free and whatnot. 
Not only that, but there's also the free table or tables. And this was shot before the show fully opened, but once it is going, you just get all of these tables filled with stuff that people brought and they don't want. Anyway, let's move back to just walking around a bit. And uh, man, look at this, a lovely Amdeck 310A monitor, amber screen I've covered on LGR before, and it's paired with an IBM PCXT with a LGR case badge, the ones that I had last VCF Midwest. So they must have kept one and stuck it on there. Nice. And yeah, just this entire wing or room in the conference center was one of my favorites. If you look on the map that they made up for the show, they refer to it as the big iron and cool stuff room. It definitely is that. You got all kinds of IBM, VAX, DEC, SGI, Televideo, Intrex, and who knows what else. Just old school minis and micros and peripherals and expansion interfaces and all kinds of good stuff stuffed into this one room. So much of which that I wish that I had more time to go check out in person or do a more detailed video on, but yeah, let's just take a look at a few of these things because the more time goes on, for whatever reason, I find myself drawn more and more to the older, more obscure, more unobtainable kind of nonsense that was well before my time, but intrigues the crap out of me just because I don't understand so much of what it does. And it brings me back to that initial spark of what got me into retro computing in the first place. Something about this era that's way too fun to look at, like this digital equipment PDP-11, or at least the chassis for one and a few related devices and peripherals. Fantastic VT100 terminal up there, oh. as well as an ADAC Corporation System 1000. I love that recalibrate label. I didn't know what this was. Apparently it's a peripheral extender for the PDP-11. And then right next to that, just the classic Lear Siegler Terminal ADM 3A running the one and only Colossal Cave Adventure. So cool, man. Always wanted one of these terminals. And then this, I was super happy to see, this is a Tapo robot. One of those little servant personal robot attendant kind of things. You could program it with an Apple II. Kind of similar to the Hero 1 by Heathkit, but yeah, this was a, its own thing. I've never seen one in person. It was a little bigger than I thought. Really wish I could have seen it in action or at least hear it talk, but you know, just awesome to see it. And of course, in the SGI corner here, you had to have File System Navigator running on at least one of them. I mean, Fusion, yeah, it's a Unix system, I know this. <laughs> Lovely 3D interface. And just so many beautiful machines from SGI just hanging out. Every time I see one of these, <laughs> it's just, you gotta stop and look. They have an amazing aura about them, inside and out. And then in the very back, there was an assortment of IBM stuff. Unfortunately, didn't get a lot of footage of this, but yeah, uh, look at that amazing display and keyboard is the IBM System 34, or at least part of it, along with some attached drives and peripherals. I wish I had more to show. And then this whole area here, I was delighted to see uh, this televideo section. So if you don't know anything about this company, I was actually planning to do an LGR Tech Tales about it years ago. I started the script, never finished it, but they did these 900 series terminals that are just legendary, a bunch of CPM machines, and they did indeed try their hand at PC clones starting in 1983 with some pretty ballsy advertising saying that, you know, this is what it should have been from the beginning <laughs> in terms of a, of a PC. And yeah, it was just really cool to see so many of these in one spot with all their different kind of displays and varying types of green monochrome. There were just all sorts of different slight hue differences. It was pretty neat seeing so many of these CPM machines and their weird PC compatibles and other stuff in one spot, hanging out, being cool. And I don't know what this guy was doing. Single step binary programming maybe, but it looked engaging. And I hope that he had good luck making whatever he was trying to work work. Right behind that though, this table or set of tables was another fantastic standout for me. Just an overwhelming row of HP machines from way back. This stuff, a lot of it I'd never seen before in person, like the Phenomenal 2100 with the 2627A color graphics terminal attached. What a beast. And I love that brown around the keyboard and the display it reminds me of some of their calculators. Then right beside it, this amazing example, a 2647A graphics terminal with chess playing. I feel like I need a glass of J&B Scotch whiskey to go beside of it. it. Very much reminds me of the thing, even though that's not the same machine, but still. And the HP stuff just continued with one incredible looking example of a machine or peripheral or add-on or something after another, dude. Ugh. This gigantic 21 NX computer series machine 
Something about the way that these look have always appealed to me. I would have absolutely no idea what to do with them, but they look amazing. I mean, look at this display. It was so sharp, so crisp on this 2645A. Ah, oh, just good stuff. There was even some Honeywell hardware hanging around here and there, which is always a treat due to the rarity of it. And I mean, this too, this Panasonic Senior Partner, another early example of an IBM PC compatible luggable, which has a thermal printer built into the top of it. So cool. And oh man, this entire back corner, dude. Yeah, spent a little bit over here talking to the guy running it. Apparently a lot of this was featured on Knight Rider. Yeah, man, amazing looking Intrex data terminals. Just incredible to look at with fantastic keyboards. I love all the colors on the keys and just the overall sci-fi design. You know, the first one looking a little more 2001, the second one a little more Star Wars. It's just phenomenal 70s design in my opinion. And I mean, I the Singer electronic perforator here, ready to stick some holes in your tape. Wish you could have seen that in action. <laughs> what a beastly thing. And then some of the tables just down from there reminded me of like thrifting in Silicon Valley in the late 80s, early 90s or something. Just all kinds of gigantic old hardware randomly tossed around, huge hard drive platters and oscilloscopes, test equipment, typewriters, vacuum tubes, even a daggum Intel Intellic MCS-8 <laughs> just hanging out. I believe all of this was for sale, or at least a good chunk of it seemed to be. More awesome Hewlett Packard stuff. Oh, HP 86, yes. Also, this lovely thing, we got a DEC PDP 1170, or a Raspberry Pi powered, slightly miniaturized version, I believe. It looked amazing. And of course, all the blinking lights, it's just pure modern art. And I was also happy to see an increasing number of late 90s, early 2000s machines, mostly from Apple, which kind of makes sense due to the, I don't know, recognizability and collectability, but just fascinating to see what's slowly becoming considered retro, like original iPods and those clear Harman Kardon speakers and cubes, and yeah, it makes sense, but still weird. Time marches on. And there was also the arcade area, which wasn't always functioning. A couple of these seemed to be continually breaking down, but yeah, when they were working, it was great to hear them and see them doing their thing. I, I wish I'd got more time to play a couple of these, but I didn't. Still, Tempest, Missile Command, Asteroids, Mr. Do, can't get wrong. And then back around over here to our tables in the corner, you can see TechSelect has an assortment of wonderful add-ons. They got so much good stuff. I recently covered the Snark Barker Sound Blaster clone for Micro Channel over my Blurbs channel. Check that out. A lot of good things for sale through TechSelect. Of course, 8-Bit Guys games, Commander X16, whatever iteration it is, just hanging out. And a number of delightful machines from the Computer Clan, yeah. Uh, check out Ken's videos if you haven't. There's a lot of good stuff here. Next Cube that he picked out at the last show, I believe, as well as the 20th anniversary Mac. Always hoping to see one of these at a show, and well, he had the one here this year. There was actually an Apple One somebody brought earlier too. I, I totally missed it, unfortunately, but yeah, apparently someone actually brought an original Apple One, like in an armored case for just part of the day on one of the days. However, Steve from the YouTube channel Mac84 did get some footage and he was kind enough to offer it for me to use here. So yeah, look at his thing. Absolutely beautiful, no touching, obviously. They did not let it out of their sight for even a second. I mean, easily the most valuable thing at this entire show, only there for a brief period of time. Hopefully I'll get to see it if they happen to bring it again next year, if that happens. Anyway, back to our tables. And beside the TAM, there was the Mod Book, which is like an Apple MacBook crammed into a tablet. Super weird thing. Again, check out his video. People loved coming by to mess around with this, and it really made me wish, like, dang it, I, I almost brought a couple of interesting tablet-style touchscreen old devices for people to mess around with, but I ended up not doing it for whatever reason. Yeah, I'll have to bring some next time if I think about it. And yeah, that's kind of the general vibe of the show. I mean, for, you know, a visitor. For me, of course, I was just back there in the corner, uh, hanging out with whoever came by, which was constant chatting and hanging out and talking about whatever, signing things, taking selfies and getting some merch sold and playing around with the LGR things that I brought. A ton of fun. Yeah, I had the uh, dot matrix printer there as well to print out whatever anybody wanted on Print Shop Deluxe or whatever else. It only jammed like five or six times, which was <laughs> less than I thought. And yeah, I also did a panel in there somewhere with other vintage tech YouTubers. Uh, Clint, I 
have to put you on the spot and ask you as well. Is there any project you thought was going to go great and for some reason it just didn't? Nope. <laughs> 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 so that couldn't be further from the truth, but I couldn't resist. Anyway, I did actually try to make some thoughtful responses as well. Uh, do check out the entire video. It was like an hour and a half or something. Pretty long, but uh, yeah, I thought it was fun. Came together well. People seemed to like it. Sort of a lengthy Q&A session. And well, yeah, that's about it, you know, overall for the show. It's just really a couple of days of hanging out, having fun with other like-minded folks buying and selling things if you want, or just going and checking out stuff that you may never see again in your life. I don't know, it's a fantastic show, highly recommend it. I'm glad as many people showed up as they did, but I'm also kind of glad it wasn't too overwhelming either. This was fewer people than last year, or 2019. Uh, makes sense, you know, I know I heard from a bunch of folks that said they weren't willing to make the trip or attend it because of the concerns about health and all of that, which is totally fine, completely understandable. We'll see how it goes next year, but I'm glad that uh, everything seemed to go over okay with the local mask mandates and whatnot. I didn't even get the usual con flu, not even a sniffle, so that was nice. And hey, in the future, if the entire weekend seems like too much for you, I'd easily recommend even just the first day of the show. I mean, both days are great, but the second day is more of the same as the first, just with a lot less stuff out on the tables fewer panels, not as much stuff to buy and sell. Depends on what you're coming for, you know? If you want more relaxed, just kind of like, yeah, farting around or whatever, the second day is probably the day to do that, or like the latter half of the first day, because people stay till like midnight. So yeah, I mean, you get different aspects of the show, depending on when you're at the show, and what you're there to do, and who you're hanging out with. And inevitably, it all just turns into kind of a retro game fest even though it's not really a gaming show, but like every single possible computer there that could run a game, had games on it, or had games that could be loaded onto it. And eventually that's all anyone was doing, screwing around, playing some games, including me. I did get to play some multiplayer Duke 3D and Doom with some people that came by. You know, anybody that asked that wanted to play it, I had them serial connected up to play some multiplayer. So that was a lot of fun. Haven't done that in a uh, environment like this in ever, I guess. Usually it was just homeland parties back in the day for me. And then around 2.30, 3 o'clock on Sunday, that was that. You know, the show isn't entirely over, but a lot of the visitors have left and a lot of the vendors and exhibitors start slowly packing up and about as soon as it all gets set up, it's all taken down, which I don't know, maybe it even takes longer to take down some of this stuff. Good grief. It made me tired just watching these guys pack up some of those larger machines from the 70s and 80s. I mean, I'm, I'm glad they brought this, but I'm even more glad it's not my problem. <laughs> it's uh, stressful enough even just hauling my little PCs, CRTs, and the MIDI Mountain up 700 miles and also well worth it. Ah, this was such a fun time and a, a great getaway for about a week in my case. And uh, that sums up the VCF Midwest experience in 2021, as I experienced it at least. It was pretty weird having my own exhibitor table at first, I gotta admit, but once I got into the groove of things, it was an awesome time. I learned a lot, took plenty of notes on things I would do differently next time. I would like to return in 2022 and also check out some of the other vintage computer fests when I can, but we'll see. Till then, I just want to give a huge thanks to everyone who stopped by to say hi while we were there. And it's awesome meeting viewers in person, putting a face to your screen names and simply chilling in an offline setting with like-minded computer people and non-computer people, really. I talked to a bunch of you that were like, I don't even know anything about this stuff. I just wanted to hang out. And that was great too. Honestly, I probably had more conversations about non-computer stuff than I did anything else. <laughs> Music, movies, cars, TV shows, comics, sneakers, aviation, audio gear and synthesizers, photography, video making, whatever, man. Like, there was even one guy, all we talked about was old telephone systems. So, many of these hobbies intersect in one way or another at a show like this, and usually some common ground in the Venn diagram of geekiness is found before long. 
Oh, and thanks to y'all who brought donations too. There were a bunch of things dropped off at my table that I didn't plan for. I wish I had room for all of it to just take it all back. But yeah, I definitely went home still with more than I drove up with. So that was a pleasant surprise. And a shout out to Ken, David, and all of the other YouTubers that were there. Not even with tables, just hanging around. I wish we'd had more of a chance to just vibe and talk shop at some point, you know, away from all the hubbub, but so it goes at busy shows like this. And finally, credit to my brother Luke, who uh, filmed like pretty much all of the footage that you've seen in this video. This is just one of those shows where I can't breathe without someone recognizing me, so recording all the footage myself was not feasible. So check out his channel as well. He's got his own video about the trip to VCF Midwest, plus some of the time we spent after the show in Chicago proper, which <laughs> that's a whole nother part of this. Anytime I go up that way, I have to spend some time in the city because it's fantastic. But anyway, yeah, that's that. I hope that you enjoyed this look at the VCF experience. Let me know in the comments if you were there or if you've got any other similar shows you'd recommend that you've been to or plan to go to or whatever. I'm always down to try somewhere new in the future. And speaking of which, I've got more traditional LGR things in the works. So stay tuned for those videos or check out some of my previous episodes on conventions and retro stuff in general. And as always, thanks for watching.